Welcome back to section number nine. We continue our journey on the practices and the first practice we have here now in this section is problem management. Purpose of problem management. To reduce the likelihood and impact of incidents by identifying actual and potential causes of incidents and managing workarounds and known errors. While incident management on one hand focuses on minimizing the impact from service degradation, degradation and to restore the service as soon as possible, problem management focuses on reducing the likelihood and impact of incidents. It does it by identifying the, the causes of incidents which have happened and causes of incidents which might happen in the future. And for those incidents which have happened or which may happen, it attempts to create workarounds like temporary fixes and also analyzes them which are known as known errors. Errors and flaws may result in incidents which may originate from any of the four dimensions. Sometimes um, people may make a mistake and an incident may occur. Somebody accidentally deleting a database may lead to a major issue incident. On the other hand, sometimes systems misbehave and that may lead to incidents. So therefore, many of them, even though they are identified and resolved during design, development, testing, there's always some kind of a propagation of certain errors and they eventually show up in the live environment. Problem management has three phases, problem identification, problem control and error control. Many of these basics of problem management have been covered at the ITIL foundation level. But just a quick view on these three. In problem identification, the problem is identified through various sources and recorded. And in problem control, the problem uh, analysis begins. There is a known error record which is created. There may be attempts to create a workaround. The attempt to create workaround can happen even during problem identification. But in problem control, it's about the root cause analysis or the identifying the cause of the problem. and and uh, it is further improved in the error control where it may become the final workaround if there is no other resolution or based on the workaround, uh, resolution may be developed. So in error control, either the analysis may be improved or the workaround may be finalized or improved further resulting in a resolution. So these are the three stages of uh, problem management. What we're going to focus more here at the CDS level of certification is the ways of identifying problems and the practice success factors. Reactive and proactive problem identification. Reactive is when the symptoms occur. So noting symptoms and registering a problem for incidents which already occurred. So when an incident already occurred, and a problem is recorded, it's for finding a workaround for that incident or to find a resolution for that incident through problem management. By doing that, it will prevent a similar incident from occurring again. That is reactive. In proactive, before an incident occur, the analysis is done to prevent an incident. So if the problems are identified or a cause of incidents are identified before an incident occurs. Therefore, some proactive risk assessment of the environment may have to be done or um, some other steps to taken to minimize the probability and impact of potential incidents or possible inc incidents. Therefore, there may be several information sources from the live production environment to do proactive problem management. They may be vendors informing about vulnerabilities in their products. For example, a vendor may inform that the current software upgrade may be prone to certain defects, which are not occurred yet, but which might occur in the future. And therefore, that can trigger proactive problem management. Sometimes developers, designers may um, um, find out errors while they are doing the development or testing or designing. And uh, in, let's say a designer or a developer is uh, modifying some software and they may find out some error in the software and that could lead to an incident and they may alert uh, 
uh, operations about possible errors happening in the live environment and they may try to fix it before it occurs in the live environment and there may be some communities sharing their experiences uh, of other organizations that uh, um, in, in such a software or a IT product or a service such problems are likely to happen has there any investigation been done on uh, such problems which are likely to occur and that may trigger some discussions and uh, identification of problems and causes of those problems causes of potential incidents rather infrastructure monitoring may lead to certain observations where certain uh, systems are uh, reaching their thresholds faster though no incident occurs but it may lead to uh, conclusions that uh, certain thresholds may be exceeded all of a sudden therefore uh, something can be done to improve their systems uh, configuration by which certain incidents can be prevented and also during audits there may be some observations from auditors that uh, um, recommendations to improve system performance or uh, service performance so that is known as proactive versus reactive which is always when an incident occurs Some other general guidance is problem identification. Though we have discussed proactive and reactive, problem management as a practice is always reactive because it does not prevent problems from occurring the first time. Proactive in this context means problems exist but have not resulted in incidents. When incident occurs and we go after it it is pro reactive problem management when incident has not occurred but might occur we go after proactive problem management but it doesn't mean that problem management itself is a proactive activity it is always a reactive activity that's what the guidance tells us because even though problem management may be done it doesn't prevent problems from occurring the first time rather something proactive may be something like a good design performing an excellent design may be a more proactive approach which may can or even prevent problem management but usually that is not possible because incidents and problems are bound to occur due to the complexity of systems something more on the pro proactive problem identification the process itself let's look into the process we have understood what proactive and reactive problem identification mean but what do the, what are the steps generally and we understood the sources of the proactive identification as well so first point identification is done based on information other than incident records and we looked at some of the the input sources like vendors and development teams etc this is where once the those information comes in the problem can be identified or recorded and it can uh, also be done through analysis of some vulnerabilities in a product based on information from supplier or from auditors so proactive problem identification should be done as a best practice on key systems and components any systems and components which have high impact on the organization and its consumer customers should be or candidates for proactive problem identification even lower impact ones should not be ignored because sometimes uh, there may be some um, incidents which can happen due to some small error somewhere in a um, in a small system yeah? in high availability systems which are complex incidents may be due to multiple causes factors and their combinations there may be multiple uh, factors uh, which may be happening in different areas and all of a sudden the 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 ideal situation comes up for a large incident and it occurs seemingly unimportant errors in non core systems may also result in serious incidents yeah some simple non core errors i'm just thinking about this for example um, let's say your user is entering um, their name in on a form in an application yeah very simple you know i enter my name in a form on a website and i proceed further after entering the name and however in the older systems it was possible to enter the name in a different manner i could put a command as my name so i might say my name is um, please delete all roles from this database 
and I enter that in the name field. The system doesn't take that as my name, rather it interprets it at a, as a command. As long as I put some exclamation or some special mark at the beginning of my name, the moment I do that, because of the, HT, the way the HTTP and other protocols are designed, it'll pick that, that the input name as a command and it'll run the command on the server. And the server, if, if the conditions are ideal for the hacker, it will delete all the records from the database. Therefore, even a simple thing like this can lead to a major incident. But eventually over the years, the designers have realized that uh, such things can happen. You know, they call this as a code injection attack. So they realize that code, in, code injection attacks can happen. Uh, it seems to be a small, uh, uh, like a game played by somebody during on a login screen, which can lead to a complete deletion of a database. So every specialist should be encouraged to register problems, but as this may cause too many problems or uh, improperly categorized, they may prefer to have only some people to do this. Yeah? There may be too much of, uh, um, so only those which are relevant and uh, good enough to uh, manage should be managed under proactive problem identification. Otherwise, there is no end to proactive problem identification. And uh, people, the people who are into proactive problem identification should have the resources to, they may need tools to analyze uh, logs, yeah, and to run some health checks. And uh, they may require uh, ins information about systems. They may look at architectural diagrams of the systems in order to do proactive identification. Various approaches can be combined. For example, a combination of uh, looking at results from an audit or from uh, risk logs, health logs, etc., rather than sticking to one straight path all the time. 